Hey, welcome everybody to another Tech Mex podcast episode. I'm your host, Eric Ramirez, and I've got my awesome co host here, Mando Gomez. <laughs> howdy, howdy. Texas way, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, today we've got episode 10, and uh, we've got a couple of good topics today. You know, we're talking about working hard and playing hard. I think that's what uh, that might be the motto of the of the Latinos here. And and we've got just uh, an update on some of the macroeconomics and some Bitcoin news today. So uh, lots of stuff to explore today. Dale, dale. All right. So I mean, nothing wrong with work hard, play hard, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't, is I don't the, mind. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I guess the trick is like always in life, right? Like uh, the yin and the yang, right? Like the balance. Mm -hmm. How you are able to to not work too much or not to play too much, right? Uh, what's your take there? Uh, the the balance, you know, the the struggle is real. <laughs> <laughs> Because well, you work too much, right? <laughs> yeah. No, and I will say, okay, it, it it is true. I think sometimes, you know, you you get into a spot where you're like in the you're in the zone and you're just like working, working, working. Mm -hmm. So you're like putting in hours. Like sometimes you're like you got twelve, fourteen hour days where you're just straight uh working real hard. And then at the end of the day, you you just sometimes either you just pass out, go to bed, <laughs> or you you feel like you got to let loose to to let go of some of that stress. So uh, you know, work hard, play hard. I I do see it. You know, sometimes it's too much, but uh, you know you learn from it. <laughs> and you say, "I'll never do that again." But uh, you know, I don't know. It happens <laughs> for sure. And I think that is also in the stage of your life or what you're trying or your goals, right? Um, I. I, I really think that I like the analogy sometimes that we should work more like a lion instead of cows. Have you heard that? Uh, no? Lions sleep a lot. So I like, I like that, right? Yeah. yeah. Which basically, if you think about it, like um, their work, which is literally surviving, mm -hmm. is, is not like um, the, the cow is always eating. Like, you know, like, uh, you know, like you're grinding mm -hmm. the teeth, right? You're, you're eating the grass. Uh, all day. Yeah. <laughs> Low and but, slow. <laughs> yes, but a, but a lion is like I need to meet, and I'm gonna I'm gonna hunt, right? I'm gonna mm -hmm. go and sprint as fast as I can to be able to get that that juicy meat. The juicy meat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, basically. So so I think that maybe I I prefer to to like that way, right? Or or to tend to work in that way where you you go as fast as you could be, right? Just to be able to to get the La chuleta, right in Spanish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that sounds very provocative. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can apply it to to any any ways, but but actually, believe it or not, this idea is not it's not mine. It, this idea is from um, one of the philosophers that um, uh, modern philosophers. Uh, mm -hmm. His name is Naval Ravikant. Uh, his content is good. So, but yeah, he 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 basically uh, says that he's like, hmm, this is. This is exactly what, how I think that I operate, mm -hmm. uh, basically in, in that in that mindset. But but I think that um, going back to the topic is um, the the problem is when we it's, it's not that you work too much. I think that maybe the issue is when um, when you are playing too much, and sometimes I think that um, as, as as a culture, sometimes we might be getting some bad reputation. Um, would you agree there, or what do you think? Well, you know. <sighs> That's a hard one. I think when uh, we've got Americans that are kind of interacting with Latinos, you know, they're, it's somewhat maybe limited. I would say like uh, in an executive spotlight and things like that, maybe at work, if you're a professional, uh, Latinos aren't as represented um, as much in those higher levels. So, you know, they don't have experience in working with uh, Latinos maybe. And what they do have is maybe uh, their contractors and things like that, that they might work with, you know, the trades that they work with. Um, so I think maybe that's where some of that reputation may come from um, instead of like, you know, all of the good things that, you know, that we know about being uh, in leadership type positions. Um, so maybe that's where some of that, reputation maybe is built from and that might give a different appearance now 
everybody everybody knows about Cinco de Mayo. So I think that immediate, immediately <laughs> will stick out to most people. It's like, oh, uh, Mexicans, you know, got uh, Cinco de Mayo. Uh, there is about the margaritas and then fajitas. Everybody loves fajitas. So it's really all about these leisure type activities too. So it's like, you know, that's not a bad perception per se, but they don't recognize maybe the other side of that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's just all kind of the fun stuff, which... Hey, Latinos, Mexicans, fun people. You know, that's, we we enjoy our leisure time and and spending time with our family and things like that. And you know, one thing leads to another, and you got margaritas and fajitas, and it's just you know, that's that's what people see. I think. Yeah, and I think that maybe as well is uh, some of the traits, right? Um, uh, some people that they start studying or whatever, they 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 can go to the to the ladder right on and even taking those some of these leadership uh, positions you start seeing more in politics as well right mm-hmm. uh, more hispanic names so i i think that uh we discussed this in the pod that that we don't need permission right like uh is this there's an opportunity you you live in america if you're in america where you get a shot right <laughs> you get a chance <laughs> so uh, no matter the color no matter your your beliefs and and that's where it is i i think that but from my perspective, there is some uh, biases and there is some um, uh, perception, right? And, and and you mentioned it probably is because a lot of the people sometimes they interact uh, with some traits, right? And when they are collaborating, when they're working, and I think that uh, that's kind of what happened, right? Where um, you get bad estimates, right? <laughs> so t- t- yeah. tell me when i mean i i'm guilty of this right i have some great uh trade people but it's like man it's very hard to estimate for them and, and that is i don't even think that it's only them i think that it, estimating is hard for everyone for sure i think estimating is very very bad in general i mean i think that's why project management is a field to begin with is because uh people don't know how to properly estimate and that's just across the board it's not just latinos but people remember that when they're working with latinos if you're you know you got to put up a fence or you got to do some uh you know some drywall in your house Mm -hmm. or whatever the case might be a lot of these trades since they're bootstrapping themselves, right? They're like, yeah. okay, I'm, I've got to build a business. I got to support my family. I'm going to do what it takes just to get the job, right? Got to get in cash. And so when they're going and bidding and these these things like that, they're doing their best to have something that is uh, that makes sense. But maybe they don't have the right systems in place and things like that to be able to give a good estimate on how long, how much it's going to take, you know, um, things like that. So. That perception is what's going to be embedded um, into the people that are hiring you, and so that's the perception that 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 can stick too. So, I mean, that's yeah. that's a you know one of the ways that I think it it happens. Yeah, and I think that uh, I'll tell you this uh, uh, thing that I'm been using lately um, to filter people that I want to work with, right? And it's very simple, man. <laughs> It's like it's like I sometimes like man this is this is so simple and so difficult right um which is uh basically when somebody tells me something and they do it right <laughs> it's like, like seriously i mean it's just as simple as that but believe me it's very very hard to find people that they do it right and it could be from my uh loan service guy right up to whatever even even an executive or whatever it is, right? It doesn't have to be only Latinos, but it's, it's kind of right now the filter that I'm having to to see, okay, because I think that it goes into uh, whether some estimations and they try their best, right? Obviously, I know that shit happens, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's like, a, a, for me, it's kind of those, uh, that's the new filter that I have, um, which it goes into your uh, work ethic and, and just trying to honor your work, right? All of all of that that goes behind the scenes, uh, and it's again, it's a it's a good filter. Um, what do you think there? Yeah, uh, I think it's it's very interesting. I have seen um, at work. I think I've seen. Uh, you know, there's like uh, there's the uh, there's the little the little letters that you can put on there, and it stands for "Do what you said you would do," which is like mm. D W Y S. 
YD. <laughs> Sorry, man. But, I won't remember. Yeah, that I'm not. I'm not going to remember. But but it's basically the first letters of that saying, "Do what you said you would do." And I okay. saw, I started seeing some people putting that in their email. In their, in their email. In, yeah, I think it's DWY or whatever SW. Y'all, y'all can figure it out. But I I when I first saw that, I'm like, "What the heck is that?" You know, like mm-hmm. I don't. I don't know what that is. So I Googled it and mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, that's like a, maybe it's like a, a key messaging thing, you know, and then the mm-hmm. workforce is like, we know we're on the same page. Like, if you know what that is, you know what it is, but it basically is like what you're saying. Like mm-hmm. that's, that's the bar. If you say you're going to do something, just do it. Like don't, don't overcommit. I know sometimes you always want to say, yes, yes, I'm going to, I can do that. I think that might be yeah. something that drives a lot of people to maybe overcommit and they don't end up doing what they say they will do. But B, um, that's one of the things, ah, you know, that's a, that's a big topic. I think in, in work in general is like, uh, mm-hmm. really, uh, that's a key because you have a perception. You want to keep that perception, uh, high or so that people trust you. That's what really gets you far at work or really in any any social setting is people trusting you how do you do that is by doing what you said you would do yeah and and i mean it's like marriage right it's like long relationship and it's built on on trust right and and i think that is just the those kind of uh unwritten agreements right it's like hey when would you be there by this time right (laughs) just in your time right it's like hey when would you finish this job right (laughs) <laughs> don't finish one week later. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how much hey. is this going to cost? Oh, exactly. Shit. Don't charge like the double, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so I think that uh, if you honor that, um, and sometimes you have to take some of the losses, to be honest, just to because <laughs> I, I I say this, and and again, this part is like there are two things that I try not to break. Number one is my work. Number two, my balls. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go so you know it's it's, it's a good a, a good way to to live in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a good one well well so i mean i think bringing this back to like you know like we mentioned this example like you know there's this perception of latinos uh maybe by the americans you know like it, they're not they're not up to a professional level uh, that they would like to work with. So what are the things that you can do to really fix that or mm-hmm. to help, help that perception as a, as a whole? What are things that we can do? Look, there, there is a lot of knowledge, but I feel that it's like broken on, in pieces because how different books and different things. So mm-hmm. uh, I, I think that is just, uh, you have to extract some information, right? On, on, uh, on how it is sometimes it's experience and and even a school right like uh, uh going to the university and uh, having some level of networking right yeah if here is the old saying of tell me with who you are spending your time mo- most of the time right and and mm-hmm. i will tell you who you are right so yeah. if your closest four or five friends are Plumbers, guess what? It's very likely that you're a plumber, right? Nothing wrong with being a plumber. I love, I love plumbers and I need plumbers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but but uh, I think that is just that, right? Guess what? If you're a business owner and most of your friends are business owners, it's very likely you're a, you're a business owner. So, uh, it you're with who you're spending time with, uh, all of those um, mindset and 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 work ethic and all of that, it rubs on you, right? So you mm-hmm. you start operating like that way. But again, there are many, many books. Um, I, I think that for the representation on different jobs, I see it. I have been incorporated right, for for many years, uh, for the last decade. So, and and I sometimes I'm in the table, and I'm the only one. I'm the only brown one, right? So and it's yeah, like so, sometimes this is depressing. It's like what the heck, right? It's like a, uh, you're in, on the table and you're underrepresented. Right? It's like a, um, I never feel that. Um, I was treated differently on the table, that, which that's nice. Uh, I, I think that that was um, intellectually is like I don't think that they they represented because it's, it's sometimes the executives is, is a small table, right? Yeah, <laughs> people will see it. So I, when when it's a small like that, they, I don't I don't feel it, right? I don't know internally what they're thinking or or their biases, but uh, what I would like it is to have more representation for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's really that's really interesting. Um 
I, w- I did a training once. Uh, I think it was like cognitive biases type of training that you do for, for leadership right at work and things like mm-hmm. that. And we did an exercise. Um, and one of the exercises was about really showing, well, what type of biases do you have, you know, mm-hmm. and the, uh, Typically in those training, at least the one that I was in, it was uh, lots of different cultures, lots of different people. Um, and we were just sitting at a table and this experiment or not experiment, but the, the exercise was about, let's talk about what are these biases that we have, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I messed up on this one because I really, I think I really <laughs> pissed off the person next to me that I was partnered with in this one. They're like, the exercise was like, hey, just say something that is very obvious about the about your bias about the person or about what you notice about this person and i was sitting next to i think she was from like haiti or something like that i i Mm -hmm. forget but um the lady and she had a very strong accent i said oh well i my bias or what i noticed is from talking to her for like three minutes is the first thing that that we did was um i said i feel like maybe perhaps you're an international person not born in the United States. And I say this because you have a strong accent. She got super pissed at me. I'm like, well, maybe she didn't understand the exercise or maybe I didn't either. She's like, well, you have an accent too. And I'm like, yeah, I know I do. I mean, I I know I don't have like the the normal American, maybe, you know, uh, business person accent. So I'm like, yeah, I know. But you know, she got super mad at me. I'm like, oh my God. But it's very like, I mean, it was super obvious. I mean, it, it it was just very strong. And so that exercise was very interesting because um, it it's really, it makes you think internally about, okay, what am I actually thinking about people uh, mm-hmm. internally? Like you, these, these are just things that on how you operate. And that, I think that's what that exercise was really about is like, what are the things that you might think day to day about a person? And so when the opposite was done for me or when they were saying, okay, what do you think, how would you describe this person? Like talking about me, about a Latino, yeah. you know, that of course they said something like around the, the stereotypical, like they, uh, which is, I think they were right on a lot of things. Like <laughs> they like to like cook out on the weekends with a bunch of family drinking cerveza, right. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it wasn't super serious, but yeah. And I'm like, well, okay, that's not too far from the, from the truth right so these are the things that come out it wasn't now let me say there were some others that said okay this person looks like he has a good job this person looks like he drives a nice car this person looks like he's maybe leads you know a large department Mm -hmm. none of that came out for for the latinos or maybe for even the um, the, the migrants or, you know, the, the people that immigrated to the U S. Um, so I think that was very interesting is like, what biases do you have even for like Americans? Like you assume, you know, they're going to have a nice house. They're going to have a nice car. They probably have a good job. Those aren't the things that you automatically assume for a Latino or for really any other minority. It, it is tough, man, because, um, like sometimes when you get, <laughs> refine or polish whatever you want to call it then they they actually some of your friends start telling you like for me i'll, I'll be i'll be transparent it's like ah oh, you are too white now like, what the fuck man <laughs> <laughs> this is what like that mean <laughs> you, you are you are white tech mexican or something like uh, that like, yeah, yeah. like dude that's a fucking lame excuse just oreo. To to... <laughs> i got that one growing up you oreo <laughs> I never hear that one. Tell me, tell me more. What, what the heck is that? Brown on the outside, white on the inside. <laughs> oh, Oreo. <shit. laughs> Look, I, I think that being racist is stupid, right? Like I, I, I teach my daughter, say, it doesn't matter, right? The, the, the color, right? It's like the intentions, what you have, being a good human being, right? So um, it doesn't matter your color. If you are stupid, you are stupid, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I, I think that is nothing with with race, right? So, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, just I'll make a a story. I went to this place uh, on the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called like Lagoon Fest. Um, it's kind of a new place in um uh, south of uh, Houston, between Houston and Galveston. Mm-hmm. Uh, big pool. It's like a pretty big pool, but 
they actually they brought some sand uh so it's kind of like a fake uh i guess lagoon mm -hmm. uh kind of interesting yeah party all kinds blah blah right anyways i i, I was there with a couple friends and a friend of mine was very upset and i said well what happened like no my, my daughter had a an altercation an, an issue mm -hmm. and and look these topics are very tough right but i i think that it's important to kind of share this type of uh, things um and, and it's just more for understanding what is happening right so uh she likes to play soccer and she's pretty good actually she was on the some of the finals for the whole city anyways um, <clears throat> she made it to the to kind of the the how they call it the the, yeah. the draws right with like uh, the last the, the finals uh, mm -hmm. and they decide which which kids they can go to the uh, to the next section anyways one of her um, uh, teammates uh, she's black she was pissed and she's like hey uh, I don't know why you don't go back to your country. So <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is a 13 year old, by the way, this is not like a, like an old person, right? This is a 13 yeah. year old. Then and I said, my friends, like, what, what did she say? And she was like over there. Right. And I was like, mm -hmm. well, I'm not proud. She said, I know I'm not proud of what, what she said, but also the whole situation, it, it was bad. And I said, okay. Then, and she's and basically, he started telling me the whole story. That is like, uh, she got, uh, she got mad. He's like, hey, what the fuck are you talking about? I was born in America. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so so this is my country, right? And actually, yeah. I'm from Texas, from Texas. And I think that the other girl was not even from Texas, right? Anyway, yeah. then the girl uh, took it farther, man. She said, well, I saw your dad uh, cutting my grass. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> she she developed it fast. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and, and here's where shit turned out like bad. My friend said that she said that like, well, ah, yeah, I saw your uh your dad picking up cotton. Dude, uh, what the fuck, man? Where did he even get this stuff from? <laughs> oh my god! Exactly. I mean, I I told I asked my friends like, dude, tell me. I mean, did she learn it from you, man? Like, no, man. Mm -hmm. And we are very we are very strict on this type of shit at home. It's like, mm -hmm. but, uh, and it's like, it's very tough because, uh, again, she's getting, she's getting into an aggression. It's like, mm -hmm. and, and she's like, well, and, and then we went into that. We started discussing because it's, it's bad. The whole situation mm -hmm. is bad. Right. Yeah. And, and that's what I was kind of, uh, saying at the end of the day, they met up, they were kids. Now yeah. they are like, you know, like playing together and all of that, which I think that that's what we need to foster. Right. To, to be able to be all, hey, <laughs> don't don't remove that bias. Yeah. No, everyone is like that, right? And this and and regarding that, that happened too many years ago. So, but yeah, bias is there, man. It's just uh, yeah, in the air. Right? Great. Yeah, I think uh, that you know we were going to I think uh, lighten the not the zoo lights here mm -hmm. in the medical center, uh, not. Maybe it was a few years. It was pre-COVID, so it was probably the year before COVID. And um, yeah, no, we were getting uh, uh, screamed at by like people driving by. Go back to your country. What are y'all doing here? Um, and it's not like uh, you know, it's a pretty diverse area. <laughs> yeah, so it's very weird to like you know to to hear that. Uh, you know, it's like oh my goodness, like what what is that about? Where does that come from? And like. Like, why? What's the point? You know, it's just really uh, divide people, I guess. You know, it's pretty, pretty. Interesting. That's when adults are doing it, right? Kids, you know, kids are just going to, you know, repeat stuff that they say and in the heat of the moment. But it, maybe it can teach us something. You know, it's like uh, uh, they're just kind of very open. And sometimes maybe it's worth having open conversations about this to, you know, get those feelings out. What what does it really mean? What are they trying to convey? You know, maybe at the time it was just emotions that got the best of them right yeah yeah, uh, yeah. uh and maybe that's all it is uh but <clears throat> sometimes both, both of them they more. got reprimanded at school by the way mm -hmm. uh because these got escalated right and and mm -hmm. they got suspended and, and and all of that right so which i think that it, it does these type of things they have to they have to talk to the parents they did right <laughs> both of them yeah because both of them they did aggression right so but again, is is uh, you you see it right, and and I think that is is this com this comes back to bias, right, on how people mm -hmm. perceive uh, 
sometimes some of the trades, sometimes some of the the things that it is. Uh, and look, the sometimes the the friendship among different cultures, right? You have like sometimes you'll see people, uh, Asians, just being friends with Asians, right? Indians with Indians, Koreans mm -hmm. with Koreans, and so on, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I'll I'll say, it. are you familiar with the? Uh, sometimes with the joke of uh, there is a there is a joke about um, the bucket and the crabs. Are you familiar with it? Mm, tell me about it. So basically, there is this person that is on the on on the beach and they are trying just to to buy some crabs. And suddenly, uh, the person notices, "Hey, how come uh, there is a bucket that doesn't have a lid?" And and the merchant, the seller, is like, "Well, ah, it's because those are Mexican." <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> what do you mean? It's like, yeah, look at it, right? Uh, when somebody is trying to get out of the bucket, they will get pulled from from the other uh, ones, right? Okay. Which, dude, sometimes it feels like that, man. I, you know, I have family members. I will not mention names, but you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening or watching this. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it happens where. I think that sometimes people they they want you to succeed and they want you to be good, but not better than them, right? <laughs> okay, yeah, I, yeah. I think that's that's probably a thing. I'm not sure where it comes from. Maybe uh, I was maybe we see it more than others because we're always trying to do something more, something better, something out of the ordinary. It's not like we're purposely just trying to be different or you know no. go against the grain, but it's just you know we have. Uh, maybe just more aspirations. I, I I don't know what it is, but yeah, sometimes you do see people always tell you why something's not going to work versus saying, Hey, how can I help? Or what can I do? You know? And, and I think that's interesting. I, I, is that specific though to Mexicanos or Spanish? Or the, the joke was about uh, Mexicans, right? So, yeah. um, which is, uh, I'm Mexican, man. And I'm not trying to be any, anything else. Actually, I, I want to prove that, we have a, you know, like a, a great work ethic that we can be whatever we want, right? Like in my case, I'm a, I'm a engineer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a, I'm an entrepreneur by heart. So, uh, I want also to to make sure that, uh, and there is nothing wrong with being a, a loan service person, right? Nothing mm -hmm. wrong. Uh, I actually know a couple very successful people that they have businesses and <laughs> more yeah. money than the one top 1%, right? Being, mm -hmm. uh, I started like that, just cutting, cutting grass, right? So, uh, but I think that is just to break some of the stereotypical uh, things. And also maybe even everything is possible, right? Which is this pod, this podcast is about that empowering. Um, if, if you are trying to go to the moon, you can do it, right? Like literally, you can become an astronaut here in Houston. There is NASA, right? Or you can go to SpaceX or or whatever. So, uh, I, I think that sometimes uh, trying to remove those walls, and sometimes those walls even are internal, right? Um, and that's part of what we're trying to to express and communicate here in this spot as well. Definitely, and I, I'll add to that that you know I I know uh, at least here we see it a lot in Texas. You know we we've got a lot of uh, laborers, trades, things like that. Man, Latinos work really hard. They oh, work. Shit. They're some of the hardest working people that you'll ever see, and I know uh, they're very well respected in that regard. But maybe yeah. some of that doesn't translate into um, what people might normally see. I guess professionals, what professionals in a normal office job might see versus um, uh, white collar workers versus yeah. blue collar worker right so um dude july and august people that they are replacing roofs man i, I remove my hat like holy shit you know I, i'm just walking on the street and i feel the heat <laughs> i see these guys like <laughs> like just working on on, on on those like you're you're right i i think that um even if ourselves if we can learn as well from from them, right? Because I know that sometimes some Latinos don't work as hard, right? Like, <laughs> so, uh, you know, and again, going back to the work hard, play hard, and being a, and doing a balance, right? Uh, mm -hmm. to, to be able to achieve what you want. Maybe it's that truck that you want, or maybe it's that house that you want, or maybe you want to, you literally want to settle and get married and whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Or, or, Maybe you want a fucking Ferrari, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's okay. I like Ferraris too. Yeah. <laughs> it's not balance, balance, right? That's right. 
That's right. And, and, and I think that that's, that's the yin and the yang. That's what we're trying to, to say here where uh, we know, just, just try to listen to ourselves. We all know what we need to do, right? Yeah. And I was going to say, you know, back to your example of the, of the crabs in the bucket, you know, I've heard something similar. Uh, it, it was more about the, the flea in the jar. I don't know if you've heard about this one, but it sounds kind of similar to your Mexican okay. crab example. The flea in the jar paradigm is that um, you put some fleas in a jar and you, you close the top, right? Mm -hmm. And the fleas in the jar will, will learn to only jump so high um, up because they keep bumping up into the lid, right? And so that's mm -hmm. just how they are. And they, those, those fleas will actually duplicate, right? right? They'll have baby fleas or whatever, and they also learn the same thing. Uh, even if you take the top off of the jar, um, those fleas will only continue to jump that high um, because that's always, that's been their paradigm or that's a paradigm that they learned. Um, and even, and they, it, it's even passed down to the baby fleas, right? And so I think the key here is, and part of what we're doing this podcast for is to uh, break that paradigm so that people know, hey, you can actually jump out of the jar if you want to. That's a decision that everybody has to make for themselves. And, you know, sometimes it's harder and sometimes it's easier for that particular circumstance. But know that there's others that are jumping out of that jar and that you can also jump out of that jar. And for your same story about the, the crabs in the bucket, you don't have to be the crab that's pulling down the other crab because they're above you. You can actually be the one that's standing there and letting the other crab stand on your shoulders and help them and uh, what will happen inev inevitably is that that crab is going to reach the edge of that bucket and it's going to be able to pull you out up with them so i think that's really one of the 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 parables that we can learn here is that you know the more that we help each other as a culture um the the better off we're going to be and we can help each other achieve our goals dude and and that's 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 beautiful yeah <clears throat> I, I remember because my trade on, on computer science, I, I've been in some companies and, and you see maybe other cultures like uh, the Indians, right? Mm -hmm. Dude, I will not forget that one person met another person and they, and they asked, ah, you're from India. Yeah, you're from India. Oh, well, this time, this time, whatever, right? But here was the, the interesting thing. It's like, hey, uh, uh, where do you live? Oh, I live in this, in this, ah, I live close by. Do you have a ride? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and I was listening because I, I was in, on, on, on at lunch, right? So, uh, no, it's like, hey, do you want me to take you? Yeah, yeah, sure, that would be awesome. But the story doesn't end there. It's like, uh, but it seems like that's a hotel. Yeah, yeah, I'm here 15 days. Uh, do you have oh, a place? Wow. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, no. Do you want to? I mean, we have a room. Uh, I mean, you can be a roommate. Uh, and I won't forget because I thought that maybe that was that instance. But no, man, that, that they help each other, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, um, and that's what I'm trying to say here, right? It's like, hey, uh, as you said that you are getting out of the bucket, uh, you, don't, you, you can help in a very easy way, right? When, when, when an opportunity arises, right? Uh, which is like, hey, do you need a ride? Hey, um, you need help here, right? Uh, it doesn't have to be grandiose. It doesn't have to be anything like that. But it starts with those little details. And yeah, I, I was surprised uh, and, and actually, I'll say even a little bit of envious of, of the whole culture of helping each other, right? Because mm -hmm. I don't see it very often, um, uh, which again, is something that we want to try to, to empower and, and, and spread the message. Yeah, for sure. I th that's a great story. And, you know, you just don't know uh, until you start talking with people, kind of their situations. Yeah. And you don't know um, why you were put uh, together to cross paths. Uh, there's, you know, that's that's how life is. You you put in, you get put into situations where you can do something or not do something. It's a choice. Uh, you know, if you can do something. You, you never know, even if it's the smallest thing, like you said, it can mean a lot to the other person just because, you know, we don't always know what everyone else is going through. So I think it's, uh, it's, yeah, that's awesome. I think we sh we should all be doing, striving to do more like that. Yeah, for sure. Which I think that, uh, <clears throat> now that you're, you're going into philosophy, man, <laughs> <laughs> we're getting, we're getting deep on the podcast today. I guess it's like, uh, you're going to put people to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I, 
I think that another another thing is because how you start changing that perception, right? Mm -hmm. And and you saw it in a in a in in music and culture, right? And in food as well, uh, which is kind of a representation on on our own uh, Hispanic heritage, right? Mm -hmm. But but I think that uh, uh, it really there are a couple of things that we can we can also embrace or or, or learn. Are you familiar with Napoleon Hill? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I've read one of his books. Um, I, I recommend, I know that it's hard sometimes to read these type of books that they are not uh, fiction or fun, right? It's not like Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings, or <laughs> 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 right? Uh, but sometimes you have to, you have to acquire knowledge. Um, uh, and even if you don't want to read the whole book, Maybe just research the summary. Get the Cliff's right? Notes. On, <laughs> I mean, do it whatever works, right? Uh -huh. uh, so I, I personally, I do like to to read the books, and sometimes now, now that I'm older, to reread them mm -hmm. because sometimes I can see I can see that new content is just this, it's just copy of the old content. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right? <laughs> so, so it's just they're, repackaging, they're repackaging, and, yeah. and all of that, right? Uh, and Napoleon Hill, he has classics. Mm -hmm. And and one of them is basically um, how to uh, how to grow rich, mm -hmm. and and it has a bunch of rules, right? Just just read it. It's it's a it's a good one. The interesting one is that he was trying to to study the some of the founders of the United States, right, of America, uh, how they became successful, right? And and he went into a journey of twenty years of trying to see what are the traits, what do they do. And, and he was able to package it right in a in a very uh literally when America was like booming right mm -hmm. so and and that's the reason why it's very very good content and one of the things that is interesting to me is the 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 way of perception uh your clothes that you wear mm -hmm. and sometimes it's funny because uh like for techies uh, we just wear t-shirts right we don't care about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes that's true right. Right. So, so, but I, but I think that um, it also it, it depends uh, where you are and what is your trade. If you are a doctor, and and you are wearing like a, some some clothes that is not like a, a scrubs or like a lab coat, it will mm -hmm. be weird, right? Like a <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's true. You got to wear something appropriate to your whatever it is that you're doing, right? <laughs> or, or a mechanic is like, and the mechanic is like in a. I don't know in a in a oh, in a oh, suit. Something. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, uh, are you to going to the quinceañera party or something <laughs> like that? <laughs> yeah, so, that's true. So, so I think that uh, you also have to see your trade, right? Like, uh, mm -hmm. look professional, right? You you just literally wear what your trade it requires. But the the call out from that book is like, um, bring it up. Like if mm -hmm. you, if you need to wear a suit, like you know, like it has to be like mint, you know, and and it's just because the the thing that he was saying is that it makes you uh, also have a good self esteem. You look mm -hmm. yourself in the mirror, and even you will start having better posture, right? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> if you look good, you feel good. I mean, that's that's a that's one For of the sure. main things. That's what I <laughs> that's what I would always tell people at work. Um, you know, wearing suits every single day, and they're like, "Man, Eric, how many suits you got?" I'm like, "I don't know, but you know, you got to look good to feel good. And when you feel good, you work good. So you know, that's how that's what I always tell people. And um, it's I think it's true. You know, you start feeling good, and that that starts seeping into everything, right? And it doesn't have to be suits right it can be like you know you have all your stuff like ironed up real nice or mm -hmm. you always make sure you smell good you got a favorite cologne that you wear or maybe you have like uh you got some watch collections and something that you like cufflinks is also like Dude, a, a I, I was into one. cufflinks you yeah know, that was one way because everybody has the the white shirt or the blue shirt or whatever mm -hmm. and and some people they do the ties right the ties uh, but for me it's just i i did like the the cufflinks so i did got a, a a good collection of cufflinks. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Well, yeah, no, I, I think that's awesome. I would love to get into something like watches and things like that. I know I have a friend, a uh, shout out to, to my buddy here that works with watches a lot. You know, I think it's something that would be really neat to, I've never really been into them except for like smart watches and stuff like that. But 
you know, he opened, he opened my eyes into that world. I'm like, holy crap, it goes deep. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I think that is the craftsmanship of the machine, right? Like, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but I think that when I get into there, it's just time sometimes, right? But when, mm -hmm. when I go into there, I'm going to fucking wear two watches. <laughs> <laughs> So it's right. like my two rollies, right? <laughs> Why? Why not? <laughs> and in the same fucking hand. <laughs> oh so, man, that's nice. Yeah. So, so I think that uh, going back to the to the appearance, right? Uh, don't go, don't be tacky. But if you got tacky, you know, like my two watches. <laughs> <laughs> go over the top, just, be extra, right? Just, just own it, right? <laughs> own it. Yeah. I, I think that the other thing that you can do is. Um, uh, how do you come across uh, mm -hmm. the the words that you use? Um, and for for me, like in my case, even my accent, right? Um, you know, I don't, I don't. My accent doesn't make me feel bad, but I'm mm -hmm. aware that when I need to communicate, and look, I have been in, t in big tables, man, <laughs> mm -hmm. and and it's important to be able to for people to understand what I'm trying to say, right? And more because my work is intellectual. So I think that uh, sometimes you, you know what are the areas where you have a gap or you're you're lacking. Like in mm -hmm. my case, my English sucks. <laughs> it's like let's be honest, <laughs> it sucks. Hey, you're doing you good. Got better. You're doing good, Monday. Don't worry. <laughs> thank you. Thank we you. haven't had any complaints on the podcast yet, so we're good. <laughs> Which actually that was that was, that's actually one of the things that I'm surprised. <laughs> 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 but you know what? That's what I want to share it here. Um, it's taking years, right, of polishing it, um, uh, speech therapy, right, like uh, to be able to, because it is hard, like, uh, mm -hmm. I, I know, obviously, I know Spanish, and now it's funny, <laughs> my Spanish sucks too. <laughs> <laughs> it's averaging out with your English now, right? <laughs> uh, because you start thinking, right, um, English is very compressed, it's very short, and, uh, and now what is happening, I'm, I'm morphing it, I'm, I'm, I always used to laugh to people that, they kind of spoke in Spanglish. English. <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm speaking in Spanglish, uh, which, again, maybe is because the brain... Um, it's more start, efficient. Mm, there you go. It might be more efficient. <laughs> it, it will grab some words that they're using in one language and another mm -hmm. ones, right? Uh, and maybe it's adding some of the flair. <laughs> 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 and, and, uh, and I think that is just part of your uh, own personality, you know, your own branding, right? So, uh, but I think that... Um, uh, it's kind of remove that bias, right, on on mm -hmm. on perception of, on people. Yeah, for sure, and I, I think so. Just in general, like you know, this key that we're that we're saying here, we've been talking this whole time about kind of um, your not not necessary physical appearances, but the perception that people have on Latinos and Hispanics. What are the things that we can do? Whatever the case might be, like Napoleon Hill said, is really look your best. You know, be professional because that's those are lasting. Um, those are those are lasting perceptions to people that you meet. Um, so that's just one one trick of the trade that you can do. Not saying you got to do it. Um, I know I don't. So I, sometimes you know I'm rolling out with just my my sport attire, t-shirt and shorts a lot. But if it's something that you know we're going out to a nice dinner, yeah, you want to show up in you know mm -hmm. in your suit or whatever the case might be. Yeah, you don't have to, and it's not necessarily about showing up. But you know you want to look presentable, and you never know who you're going to run into or meet. So it could work out. I I think that um. Sometimes you can you can be stylish or uh, in a very modest way. Meaning, sometimes you you'll you'll see me wearing black t-shirts. I, I just like black t-shirts, right? And mm -hmm. sometimes I don't like to have logos. That's one of the things I, I don't like logos. Compared to other people, like ah, you know, like Armani or whatever, right? Like Prada, mm -hmm. or whatever. So, but again, it's it's just people have different tastes, right? People have different things. So. Going back a little bit deeper on, on this, um, you have to start looking into into different philosophies of life, right? And for that, there is a, a lots of content, lots of information. Yeah. And here is where I think that uh, sometimes it can, it can also be parallel with a religion as well. Um, but I, I'll, I'll touch base in, in one that is not religion, right? And because also there's people that they don't believe in. In God, right? Mm -hmm. um, ha have you heard the, the the phrase from Nietzsche, um, which is uh, "God is dead and we have killed him"? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. What do you think that means, or how does that translate to like what we're talking about? 
Uh, I think that is uh, uh, it's just the the evolution on on society, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Where I'm not saying that it's good or bad, right? That's that's for people to decide and that's for people to believe. Um, but I think that is just uh, it, it is silly not to think that there is people that they don't believe, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, it's part of the ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. And and I think that for for people that they are very intellectual, uh, sometimes it's hard to to believe in in religion. Mm -hmm. And and I think that this is important topic to to touch because if you don't have that, then what are those principles or what are those beliefs or those kind of guidelines to be able to decide how do you operate uh, at work, right? Or with yeah. others. And and I think that that's the reason why I, I see it. Uh, what's your perspective there? No, uh, I think, you know, there's a lot of different learnings that you can take from, you know, lots of the different religions. I think, you know, they each have their own approach to life. Um, and so the key is, I think, really, what can you apply to your own life and it's not just it doesn't have to be even religious texts it can be like like we mentioned kind of more of the philosophical texts that are out there there's lots of people that you know for thousands and thousands of years that we have um information about mm -hmm. their their the books their journals things that they've left behind where we can actually learn from maybe you know the not not mistakes but uh the learnings from you know past lifetimes and that can really still apply to today. Like you said, a lot of stuff is just repackaged over time. Mm -hmm. um, and But that means that there's some things that always have held true. What are those things that we can actually leverage then? I, I give more um, weight to content that has been transcending, right? Like mm -hmm. through thousands of years. So um, one of them is is basically the uh, stoicism. You Maybe you have here the, the phrase, Ah, uh, this person is stoic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and almost, almost uh, when somebody refers to that is because they think they think that they don't have emotions that they are like robots, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the, but actually, when you start learning more about that, it, it is more about um, kind of managing your emotions. And and let me, I, I might say something controversial here, but fuck it, it's my pot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's Which hear it. Is... Let's hear it. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. I, I think that uh, uh, religion sometimes is very hard because it's kind of hand wavy. Ah, mm -hmm. love one another. And again, the message is good, but it yeah. doesn't go into detail. It doesn't give me tactics. It doesn't tell me how to operate every day, right? I mean, like in the boardroom, right? <laughs> <laughs> or in the war room, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, 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 and for me, uh, philosophies or stoicism kind of helps me. It's not a religion. It's a philosophy. It's, it's just a way of think, how to think. Mm -hmm. So, um, are, are you are you familiar with the um, with some of the ideas or? Yeah. So it, it's kind of funny, and do you, uh, yeah, definitely see the point. Like sometimes they're not super like tactical, or you might think, how do I apply this to my world? But I will say, like. Um, like one specifically, uh, the, uh, the art of war sense. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't, I read that because I wanted to have a good defense for what a lot of people that I might say are doing things that are not ethical or being unethical and maybe being a little slimy. Like I, you know, there's a certain way that, you know, I have a line that I don't cross, but I know other people will, sure. but for me to understand where they're coming from, <laughs> I read that because I'm like, and holy crap, you're like, this is what people are doing. And yes. I don't know if they're doing it purposely or not, but obviously there's some learnings that you can take from that. So even if you think like, maybe I don't want to adopt like what these books are saying, you might want to read them in terms of, you know, what are other people doing? And are you being basically gaslit, right? People mm -hmm. gaslighting you or are there people like doing ulterior things to you? Are they sucking up? to you just because they're trying to do something else or distract you. Um, those are very, very interesting learnings and just purely from like a defensive purpose. So you understand, you know, other people are very, are being maybe very strategic or they're trying to do things, you know, that you may not realize or know about, but it helps you keep an eye open to things. So I, I think there's, you know, it can be good for offense and defense. You know, I'm wearing my yeah. Texan shirt, so uh, it's sports analogy, right? But I think it, it could be good for both. 
For sure. <clears throat> I, I think that um, I do have another uh, simplistic way to see this, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lately, I'm just simplifying things, right? Like super, uh -huh. uh, yeah, simplifying it. That one is like literally um, assume or expect that the the path most obvious is the one that they're going to want or, or, or care. Let me mm -hmm. give you an example. If you assume that maybe uh, somebody is like, sucking up to you is because maybe they want something it's very likely that that's what it is <laughs> yeah yeah exactly right? so assume that because it's like a, then it will be a pleasant surprise that maybe is like hey maybe no maybe actually they wanted a friendship or that person is kind <laughs> uh -huh. uh, right so and and you can you can uh you can have the awareness to go around and and assume mm -hmm. maybe that one which is part of the emotions right um that, that the managing of the emotions but yeah that book of uh, the art of war is pretty good yeah yeah those are you know there's some classics out there that you know take the time to read them and if you want like mando said you can always do the shortcuts and either find like an audio book or just find the cliff's notes but uh, a lot of them can be pretty interesting um it's funny you mentioned thing about the like emotions like uh mm -hmm. what 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 do you mean about emotions and and i know we went down the path of uh, stoicism but uh what is it about stoicism and emotions that are like kind of bringing this together here i think that is just i mean we are we are an emotional creature right it's like a lot of the decisions that we take is is based on or rooted on on a ego or emotion or uh or something internal, right? So mm -hmm. I, I think that is a, it's a key aspect of the mindset because mm -hmm. a lot of the, the problems that we put ourselves into, they're not logical, right? <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there is an emotion there. Uh, and if you keep digging, 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 there is an emotion. And I'll, I'll share with you, uh, usually I like uh, certain books. I call them shakers. Like they shake my, mm -hmm. my uh, ideas, my sometimes even identity, right? Or, mm -hmm. uh, or how... I perceive the world. And one of them is uh, from Seneca. Seneca is one of the Stoic philosophers, and uh, he has this book called um, On the Shortness of Life. And the way that he wrote them is on, um, on essays or stories. And you don't have to read the whole book. It's, it's actually, that's the, the interesting part. Mm -hmm. That if you have a situation, because there is always a situation, maybe your partner died, right? Your wife, husband died. He has a, an essay about that. Maybe somebody stabbed you in the back, right? In the office. <laughs> he, has, <laughs> he has an essay for that, right? Mm -hmm. So, oh, you're afraid that you're losing your money and your Bitcoin. Fuck, <laughs> the guy has an essay for that. <laughs> Man, this right? guy's been through for it fear. all. So we should have him on the podcast. <laughs> Dude, I, I wish, man. If if that if that actually that guy is one of the guys that I will like it to talk with because uh, he was very successful um, politician slash entrepreneur in that time, and mm -hmm. he's a Greek, right? So I think there's uh, an yeah, AI it's, it's for that. Totally <laughs> I think there's an very AI likely, for that. Very likely, <laughs> yeah. very likely, there is an AI for, AI for this, right? So, uh, <laughs> but I think that. Um, it's just for every circumstance that uh, uh, he wrote an essay, a, a way of thinking and how to get out of the hole. <laughs> because yeah. it, it, it kind of moves you internally or, or uh, it puts you in a bad state of mind. And it allows you to have the tactical advice to be able to claw yourself back, right? To, sure. to the light. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's pretty cool, pretty interesting. So, I mean, we'll put these these philosopher names or all these books that we're talking about in the notes because I think, you know, it's, it's an interesting reading list. And um, people, you can always take something. I mean, it might not, you might not take the whole book, but maybe you'll take one or two nuggets from it and be able to apply some of that stuff. Um, speaking of like the emotions and stoicism and being stoic, things like that. I know there's a lot of uh, character assessments that people do um, within, uh, you know, professional world and things like that. There's one called, I mean, most people I've heard of like IQ, right. Um, but uh, there's also the term called EQ, which is like your emotional quotient. And that's actually one of the, uh, one of the characteristics that they measure from doing it, it's like maybe a 150 question type of survey. It's pretty quick, 15, 20 minutes or something. Um, and 
uh, there's a book that goes along with it, but you, mm-hmm. you do, you do basically this assessment, um, and you answer these questions about how you might react to certain things. And it will tell you where you fall on this quotient. Do, do you seem to be emotional? Can you control your emotions? Are you able to, um, uh, go through a difficult situation without lashing out. Um, and it will tell you where you fall on this continuum. Uh, because the idea behind this is that, you know, one is awareness. You always have to be aware of um, where you are on different um, continuums. And then it gives you kind of uh, ideas or tactic, tactics to help you improve. So if you're seeing, uh, you know, you're in situations where maybe you act too quickly or you're very reactive, um, or people are telling you, mm-hmm. like, chill out, calm down. Maybe this is something for you to uh, look into the EQ, do this quick assessment, and it'll give you some ideas of things that you can do, you know, tactical, real things that you can practice with um, over time. So that's that's one of the things that I thought was pretty uh, pretty good as well. And it's not old philosophy. I don't know what it's based off of, but, but um, you know, it's uh, it seems to be pretty good. A lot of people use it. Mm. Yeah, uh, you know there there are many uh, philosophers. The other the other ones that um, they are stoic, um, Marcus Aurelius, and mm-hmm. Epictetus. Um, and the difference between these two is that Marcus Aurelius was basically a Roman emperor. I mean, the most in that time in his time he was literally the most powerful man, literally on the known world. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. and he 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 wrote this book, and it was not a book actually was his own personal journal. And mm. when he died, uh, people say, you know what? This information is, is, is pretty good. We shouldn't burn it because he actually uh, requested to be destroyed and they didn't destroy it, right? Mm. And, and it is actually one of those treasures of humanity because yeah. the struggle is real. And even for the most powerful men in like in existence, right? For for his time, <laughs> and and it's a it's a nice book because uh, he is like let, he goes into the temptations, right? Like a, a, what does he feels and and he can do whatever he wants, right? To to slaves and so on, and the guy is like, no, I need to be a good human being, right? Like a, and and I think that one of the the, the things as we are talking about some of the uh work and and how to operate at work or or with others he has this notion of um trying to be aligned with nature which means that uh, look around how the the bees are trying to be the bees the plants are trying to grow right they are literally doing according to the order of nature how come you are not finding a job right like uh, you should be able to see what is your nature mm-hmm. to be able to find what uh, to be attuned to to nature and and do it well, right? So uh, he also uh, provides a couple examples of um um of a tree, how a tree just grows, um uh, just being big and and without any uh, ego or any admiration, uh, it's just for the sake of be. A it's tall a tree. tree right? Trees it's grow. Tree. <laughs> Trees grow. That's what they do. <laughs> for sure. For sure. So, so I, I do think that, um, and the, the version with uh, Epictetus, the Epictetus interesting content is because he was an slave. So it's just mm-hmm. different okay. perspectives of the philosophy. One that he was uh, very powerful and, and, and rich, and the other one that he was a slave. So that's, mm-hmm. that's the reason why they are, they are very good uh, portions of Stoicism, and both of them, they were Stoic. So it doesn't apply only for the rich, also applies for, in this case, for <laughs> from the bottom, right? Uh-huh. Ah, well, very interesting. I think those are some really good uh, resources for us to kind of note and, and take some stuff away from. But um, I think the key is, you know, Latinos maybe, have you seen, like, do you think Latinos are seen as being hot-headed sometimes? Like, they're very emotional or, or things like that? I mean, like, maybe I think that there is some, right? Um, but but I think that there are different ways to. Uh, I'll, I'll give another nugget here. Um, I think that when you are, if you are right, uh, mm-hmm. if you are kind of emotional or you know temperamental or you just lash out, whatever it is, right, whatever emotion is feeling, 
you have to have the awareness, which is very difficult, right? But mm -hmm. but even even if if you already did your <laughs> your tantrum, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's okay, right? Uh -huh. I, I think that uh, you can start thinking, and usually there is an exercise. It's almost like a meditation. Uh, you start thinking on uh, in the future, right? It's like, hey, uh, will this matter in five days? Or you also, and you have to try to answer yourself and you can answer as well, will this matter in five weeks and so on, right? Will this matter mm -hmm. in five years? Then it allows you or it forces you to, to try to see the things more objectively. Yeah. But and maybe you don't need to be so attached. Like right mm -hmm. now, it might feel like, oh man, that really gets me. I need to get that person back. I need to say something in retaliation. I can't let them get away with that. You need to take that step back. It's uh, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta bring back and remember, put things into perspective. And, um, and I think by practicing that you'll, you'll become better and better at it, but really, you know, it goes back to being aware. Mm -hmm. For sure. All right. Well, um, I think we covered a lot of ground today. Uh, Maybe there's a couple of things that we wanted to uh, just talk about in terms of uh, some tech news to bring it back to some of the tech items. Um, do you want to talk about some of the things that came out in the news this past week or two, Mando? Yeah, for sure. I, I think that um, one interesting one was the Bitcoin and the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin price uh, went down, right? Uh, almost 11%. And, yep. and I think that is just because uh, there was a lot of money, uh, 1 billion, uh, it was taken out. Who knows, right? You can go into the thinking that maybe these hedge funds, they're kind of manipulating the, the market. Right. Uh, it could be, or it's just, a, it's just the volatility of the instrument, right? I mean, we, we know that Bitcoin moves ups and downs, so it's part of the, the whole the normal uh, fluctuation. Normal yeah. fluctuation. Um, the, other, the other one that happened, though, uh, it was the um, interest rates, uh, mm -hmm. which they are kind of together, right? Um, basically, uh, always cash flow is the king, but, but cash is trash. And what it means is that <laughs> when, when inflation is going up, uh, you don't want to keep money on the bank because it's losing, it's looking its value, right? So yeah. try, try to reinvest it quickly, right? Don't keep it on just as cash, right? Um, grab a CD if you're in America or buy, if you can buy stocks, buy stocks, the ones that you, you want to buy or bonds, right? A little bit more mm -hmm. safe. But yeah, don't, don't keep it on. Uh, on the bank because, or at least has to have in a, in a high interest rate just to, to try to fight a little bit of the inflation because right now it's 7%, which yeah. it has been the highest in the last 20 something years. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, I, I think it's normal to see some of this volatility and for, for those of y'all that, you know, follow Ben Cowan, uh, he does a lot of that kind of more macro level analysis, not like day to day, day trading type of stuff. You know, he see, he's seen this, this dip was kind of expected, um, preceding the, the bull run. And it's been seen in all the last, um, uh, different cycles. So if you're more interested in that, look up Ben Cowan on, on YouTube. He, he, he recently has uh, covered some of this and it's like, yeah, this is something that we've been expecting. It's something new, but I know for a lot of people new to crypto and Bitcoin, you know, stuff like this freaks them out. Uh, uh, and I'm not trying to minimize it because a lot of people have money in the market, but keep in mind that the people that freak out about it, there may be more <laughs> freaking out because they do more day trading. If you take a step back, look at things long term, you know, this was something that's expected. Um, it's part of the cycle and it's really a precursor to something really good, which is what you might expect to see in the next bull run. Uh, so much so that uh, Peter Thiel, a billionaire, he's saying that, you know, Bitcoin's going to 100x from here. And so that's what he's uh, targeting. A lot of folks, you know, that's why there's all these ETFs that are coming up right now you know 100x bitcoin from here is like you know a three million dollar bitcoin four million dollar bitcoin or you know around the time he was saying this so uh just uh keep at it again we're not we're not we're not um uh investment professionals here but uh you know it's something that has worked worked for us um anything you want to close with mando no i think that uh just uh Watch your emotions. <laughs> read, read some of those books. And, and yeah, that, I think that uh, we are just trying to provide some good content. 
Yeah. So uh, just to close things out, just want to remind everybody to uh, like, like, subscribe, comment, uh, tell your friends about us. Uh, we're again, this is a new channel for us. We're on episode 10 here. We want to make sure that uh, we're uh, <laughs> that we're uh, providing good content for you. And so if there's any feedback, please let us know. Uh, we're working on different things and we're planning our next set of episodes uh, for the next season uh, where we were hoping to start doing more uh, interviews and things like that. So uh, do what you can spread the word. Uh, you know, go forth sin miedo. Sin miedo. Bye. See ya. Peace.